Okay, anyway, we got NXT 2.0 here today, everybody, which uh, I thought was a good show. The uh, They made a... You know what my big talking point for the show is? I don't care what you or anybody else said. I was right, and you actually you might mean? have agreed, that uh, putting Lash, Leg- Lash Legend with Pretty Deadly was like the smartest thing they could have possibly done. Because now, we don't have to watch Lash Legend singles matches anymore. She's in there in six-person tags with experienced workers. She can stand on the apron and learn. She only has to do a few things in the match. I mean, miles, are you miles gonna incorpor- better. Are you incorporating one of those things, that whole No, that basketball thing, thing, that basketball yeah. thing. Like, uh, you know, I never, I never say that anybody needs to be fired because I don't want people to lose their jobs. But I'm on the edge here with, like, whoever is okaying this spot, stop. Can I ask you Tell a question? Tell her it looks horrible. I I won't interrupt much here, but like why they felt the need to get her on TV so quickly. Nikita Lyons at least had some wrestling experience, even though I wouldn't have put her on right away either. They are dead set. Why do they not just pull her off for like two months? They're going on, on coconut show loops. You can put her on the undercard of a, a show WWE comes down for, put her in a, a multiple person tag match or something like that. Why are they so dead set? Well, She's bro, got a big personality, listen, but dude, she they're not a, even giving her skits to show off the personality, really. She has a big personality, and if you're going to put her in six persons and she doesn't have to do much in the ring while she learns on the road, I'm fine with her being on television. But I do not want to see long but, singles matches. But is she going to always be with Pretty Deadly? Because they used her as a way to have Pretty Deadly get a win well, over the champions who are facing Gallus already because you got that thing going on. So are they going to be I, at I the don't know. I'll worry, Alba about, Fire, I'll worry about that later. Because Alba Fire last week kept bringing her name up when she was talking again. And it's like, are we going to keep going with that one? Because I've seen enough there. Well, bro, she can get two partners. And I'm fine with it. I'll worry about I'll worry about her going as a single again when they break up. Till then, Kiana James is going to be one of those partners. Okay, so the show opened up with Grayson Waller and Apollo Cruz, and this was a good match, and it was very clever what they did. They did a spot, and Grayson Waller accidentally eye poked him, and Apollo Cruz sold it like a legitimate eye poke. Rolled out of the ring. They had the people come and check on him the whole nine yards. Go to commercial. They come back, and he's he's largely recovered. So at the end of the match. The finish is Grayson Waller goes for his dive roll into a cutter. Apollo grabs him in midair. And, of course, Apollo's crew's that big, his finish is that big slam. So he grabs him. He starts lifting him for his slam. But in midair, Grayson eye pokes him again, turns it into the stunner, and pins him. That was awesome. The, the, the story of this match was great. It was worked very well. Apollo Cruz is great. This was a good opener. We had uh, another Diamond Mine skit. I don't know what's going on here, but the Diamond Mine no longer trusts Roderick Strong, and he's very upset about it. And Damon Kemp made it very clear he doesn't trust Roddy either. So I think Damon Kemp is going to join with Roddy and turn on the creeds, but I guess we'll find out. But uh, Tatum Paxley is is still with... She's not in the Diamond Mine, but she's been training with Ivy Nile for weeks, and they're going to have a match later on tonight. Throughout the show, we had uh, Finn Balor was there, Shayna Baszler was there, a bunch of other main roster. Rhea Ripley. Yeah, Yeah. the show is Worlds Collide with a bunch of of champion versus champion and and interpromotional allegedly matches with NXT UK. So they brought main roster people down to give pep talks to the NXT blokes to tell them you better win this, this match here. So it was a clever way to get main roster folks on the show because usually, you know, when... Advertise in advance, it often helps. I don't know if it's going to do anything for this show. but No, nah, but it was a smart way to do things. It made it a cooler show. So, again, it's just one in their hat, and they didn't have to hype too much up for it. I liked it. We had Caden Carter and Katana Chance against Ivy Nile and Tatum Paxley. And it was a pretty good match. It wasn't, it wasn't a great match, but, you know, there weren't any of those spots where everybody was lost or anything like that. And I think that Katana and Caden have turned into a pretty pretty decent team and you know they did a good job with the other two and and finally uh paxley got pinned after gg and jc ran down and brawled with ivy now the one thing about this show is every somebody runs in in every single match i could do with less of that by by the third time it's like bro i got it people run in all the time they got to come up with something different 
Uh, or they just got to beat people. I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world that, you know, Tatum Paxley gets beaten, and then you do an angle afterwards. But somebody is running in in every single match. And then uh, Katana and Kate Carter, who are supposed to be baby faces, they cut this promo and they basically say, ah, we beat everybody, so we're going to have a, a, a parking lot party at Worlds Collide. And this leads to Nikki, Ash, and Dewdrop coming out, who got the big superstar reaction because they're from the main roster. And uh, they shake hands. That match is on for Worlds Collide. We had another awesome Kiana James segment. She's the greatest. She's doing a deal on <laughs> Zoe Stark. This was not as good as the one that she did for uh, uh, Nikita Lyons, but it was pretty good. The Joe Gacy stuff comes down to the ring with the dyad. They want uh, Cameron Grimes to join, so he comes out. They try to, you know, give him the big talk to get him to join. He doesn't want to join. I don't need you, he says, to go to the moon. And Vinny's going to be so happy. He's back to his old gimmick. But then Gacy says, just go home. Who are you going to go home to? Your father? Of course, his father's Ooh. passed away. So Grimes is upset. He gets in the ring. He starts beating everybody up. And as he's beating them up, it's one of those goofy things. Gacy's finisher is a handspring into a lariat. So there's a brawl. And <laughs> Gacy can't just go to lay him out. In the middle of a wild brawl, Gacy stops looks at him, turns around, and runs to do a handspring so that he can bounce out for his big lariat, but he's about to lariat him, and he stops, and he hugs him, and everybody pops, and Grimes shoves him away and rolls out of the ring. I hate this Joe Gacy stuff, but for the story they're telling, I actually like what they did here. It's continuing on. Hey, the match is going to kick ass between those two. I promise everybody that. Well, that will be good, yes. Pretty Deadly and Lash Legend beat Briggs, Jensen, and Fallon Henley. Like I said, she had to do her stupid basketball spot between the ropes, which it's got to end. It's just got to. But other than that, her and Fallon didn't have to do much. The guys did most of the work. And, you know, Pretty Deadly is awesome. And, you know, Josh Briggs. More so Josh Briggs. He's, he's pretty good. Brooks Jensen is green as grass, but he just had to make a comeback in his stupid outfit. And uh, so they're doing the whole deal, and you'll never guess what happened. Folks run out. Here comes Gallus. And they're actually at a, the craziest dive spot. Uh, pretty Deadly is outside. And I think, it was, I think it was all three of them at one point. Pretty Deadly and Lash. And uh, Fallon goes running. And uh, JB grabs her, and he freaking tosses her. And she flies over there. It's a perfect catch. And laid everybody out, and... So anyway, Gallus gets involved, and it led to uh, Pretty Deadly getting the pin. And then we had the big brawl afterwards. And the brawl turns into a battle royal with 5,000 people enter- exiting the locker room. And it's a huge brawl. Everybody goes crazy. And uh, it's pretty good. We had a Shayna segment. We had J.D. McDonough doing a promo. He uh, Literally, his gimmick is, I'm creepy. And he reads the comments. Yeah. Hope he read mine. And we had Andre Chase against old Charlie Dempsey, who was the son of William Regal, but they can't say that name. So the gimmick last week was he was beating up everybody at Chase University. So Andre, the uh, head instructor at Chase University, has got to teach this guy a lesson. And uh, Dempsey does a total, you know, snake pit style match. Andre Chase is doing the pro wrestling. And finally, at the end, uh, Dempsey goes for something. But Chase reverses it and pins him. And Dempsey's furious, and he's going nuts, and Andre rolls out of the ring, and the teacher taught the student a lesson here in this like match. That. Didn't like it. Didn't like it? Well, just because Bobby Dempsey's so good, why not have him actually have a, a match against Bodie? I mean, I want to see Chase actually do more Bodie, uh, uh, Chase and Harlem Bravado. I want to see him do more in the ring. But... Uh, to me, if you're you, the way you debut Bobby Dempsey, to me, make him a little bit of a killer. Give him a couple wins. I didn't think it was important. To well, they should right have done that bat. match this week, and then and then yeah. built to the uh, the match with it, the teacher. But. What a cartoon Bodie and Leah Hale are too. On the oh, they're the greatest. Ring. Oh my god, they're the best. Then we had uh, Gunther giving Tyler Bate a pep talk. Zoe Stark beat Kiana James. Bros, I've been telling you how good uh, Zoe Stark is. Very good. Man, she got a match. This is probably the best match Keanu James ever had in her life. 
and just a, a very good match. Flip GTS finisher, and then uh, James tries to attack her afterwards, but Nikita Lyons made the save. So apparently, I think they might actually just be putting them together as a tag team for a while, and uh, maybe they'll go for the tag team titles. More, uh, they actually had a really cute segment. Yes, I used the word cute. Nathan Frazier is backstage with Axiom. And of course, Axiom is a former A kid. And they're both reading comic books. And uh, this Nathan Frazier character doesn't know that Axiom is A kid, even though they've been together forever in uh, NXT UK. And Nathan Frazier's telling about, oh man, NXT UK was great. You'd have loved it there. Man, the stuff we could have done there. And uh, anyway, they agree to do a best of three falls match coming up at the show, which should be awesome. Gallus and Diamond Mine. I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, they must have some big angle after this because there's a lot of time left in this show. But instead, they uh, they don't. You'll never guess what happened. Uh, Gallus wins, but thankfully, pretty deadly. I, I guess this was a little different. They ran in after the match, and they go after... Uh, Diamond Mine. This actually was a segment where the locker room emptied, not the previous segment. But they had a, a giant brawl, and uh, match was uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it was uh, Julius Brutus and Damon against Joe Coffey, Mark Coffey, and Wolf. This is exactly what you need: is guys that are green but have potential to face a, a, a three man crew that's veterans that can work. And I thought it was good. Good match. Everybody got a chance to look good. And uh, that was the wrestling main event. And then we had a Quincy Elliott promo. I already love this guy. Mm -hmm. I always, this is the example of nobody wants to pay money to see their neighbor. And uh, my neighbor is not Quincy Elliott. I wish my neighbor was Quincy Elliott, but my neighbor is not Quincy Elliott. This guy's just oozing charisma. Total gimmick. He's just... <laughs> I thought this guy. I cannot I wait to see. I haven't seen Level Up, but I hope he can go a diva. little bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then a larger-than-life character. Yes. That's what Quincy Elliott is. He's larger-than-life. I like it. And then the main event was uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams coming out. And long story short, Ricochet interrupts. And so we are going to get Ricochet versus Carmelo Hayes. Which should also be great. Oh, Hayes on the mic. This too. show has oh. totally turned around. This show has they, totally turned around. And you know what? They've did a good job blending their blue chippers with their people with no experience whatsoever and dri dribbling in some people from the main roster into that. Some people coming over from NXT UK that'll stick around. It's a much better balance now. It's a much more enjoyable show and a lot easier to watch. You know, Tom, it was abundantly clear this week that I just don't get enough respect. Excuse me? I feel I deserve a little bit of credit for your, your recent success. You want to take credit for my victory in the G1 Climax? You can fuck off. Why don't you put your money where your little mouth is and get in the ring with me. No. If you, if you really want to take credit for this shit. There's a tweet from August 3rd. Who wants to make it happen? I'll team with Debbie Malenko. Why don't you call up Billy Starks and why don't you step in the ring against me and her, huh? I'll text yeah, her right. right now. I'll be in Chicago all out weekend. How about that? I'll call up Mikey. The Black Label? Yeah. Debbie, are you... Available all out weekend. Look at those arms. Brian's not even in ring shape for this. Show me yours, Tom. Huh? Look at this. Go back and forth. Huh? Go back. Jared, put yours up. Go back. 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 Oh, yeah. Who's not in ring shape now, motherfucker? She can't do it. She can't do it. She can't do it. This is like when we grappled, Brian, and you clearly tapped. Oh, fuck off. I what a dick. Oh, so now now you're getting fired up? Well, Fuck, dude. You know, we can settle this. God. You know, we can settle this. You meet me in Chicago. I'm, I'm in. You've agreed. Yeah, I've agreed because you don't have Basically. a fucking partner. I will beat dude. your ass silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm texting him right now. Mikey. By the way, okay. Yes, all caps. I'm not the only killer that you're going to be in there with, Brian. Killer 
Kelly. See you in Chicago. Although I, I was just alerted that the show is at 11 o'clock p.m., so I, I may have to pull out. That's past my bedtime. So if you're going all out weekend, Black Label Pro, Friday, September 2nd. I can't wait to beat your ass. Not going to happen. It's been years in the making.